strength. <laughs> it's it's hard <laughs> to switch. <laughs> okay, strength is is the only thing that that person is depending on. Knowing this, all the peoples of the world are doing everything possible to arm themselves, to increase the power of their country, to weak both before the strong. The faint hearted hides from him. This truth is well known by the people of this world. Everything, everywhere, everywhere there is an accumulation and four of forces for battle between social group and uh, between some systems. Who has not heard about the power of the atomic and hydrogen bombs, about super powerful aircrafts, uh, air fortresses, flying rocket shields? This power is earthly and destructive. But there is the power of God. Yeah. Heavenly, creative power. A person least of all wants to know about this power. Although only this power from above, the power of the Almighty has keep and still holding the world from uncontrolled growth of evil and not compulsive, completely uh, uh, chaos on our earth. The power from above is the power of love and not comparison. This power for God has a gracious effect in the soul of reborn person and the people, all people need it without exception. Before his and God's uh, ascension, the heavenly teacher, Jesus Christ, said to his disciples. You know these words? In book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 8. But you will receive what? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has, co has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Amen. This verse, amen, yes, this verse tells us we are able to become witnesses only on the one condition. Only on the one condition if we will receive what or who? Holy Spirit's power. Amen. What is witnessing? What this word means? Oxford Dictionary gives us two definitions of the, of the words of witness. First definition or first meaning to see an event to take place. And, for, and second, have knowledge of an event from personal observation or experience. And so to be a witness is when I heard or I saw the event, my friends. When this event become part of me. The disciples were witnessing about the alive Christ. A Christ who was resurrected. Even though the Israel leaders wanted to keep him dead, if you remember the story. The most important thing what these leaders had to do is to keep an idea of Jesus Christ is dead. He is dead. But for the disciples, news about resurrected Jesus Christ, about God who is able to resurrect, not just talking about that, he is able to resurrect, was the key moment of, the, of their experience. It was key moment of their experience in their spiritual life. Today, the question for us, today is the question for us, or question towards you and myself, what kind of witness of Christmas, of Christian, uh, Christ, Christ I am? Am I a witness of Christ who is dead? Who was a great teacher by many, but those life was ended? Or am I a witness 
of Jesus Christ who need to resurrect, to resurrect. And, and I try to resurrect him with my deeds and words and my worship. Or am I witness of Christ who has conquered death and who is a mighty counselor, mighty father and prince of the peace? My friends, maybe you have not witnessed God's power in your life lately. Maybe you are so discouraged and your spiritual weak, spiritual fatigue. In your inner perception, Christ is a just good teacher, got nice teacher. Who is that? My friends. My dear friends, beloved, if someone is having this feeling, this spiritual fatigue, then I would like to pray with you. I would like to stop our worship today, our sermon, our time for witnessing. I would like to stop because I would like to pray about, about our spiritual fatigue, if maybe our weaknesses, maybe our disappointment, um, disappointing. We need to pray together. Because half, half, you have not felt and you have not witnessed God's power in your life. I would like to pray today about the reality of the alive God would touch your heart, my heart. So Jesus Christ who lives would be open to you and you would become his witness. Right now. My friends, I would like to pray with you. Right now, please stand up. If you would like to come up on the, fro uh, on the front fro of, to pray, we will pray about the God's presence and fill our hearts. We need this spiritual impulse from Holy Spirit. God wants to heal us from indifference, from spiritual weaknesses. God wants to make witnesses out of us. And I am asking again, to join me in the prayer. Either stand up or even come up here and we will pray together. We will pray together. <sighs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we are your people. We are your nation standing before you. We understand our weaknesses, our spiritual failure. We see our indifference and we pray, heal us. Heal our mind, heal minds, heal our hearts. Give us your power. Touch us, touch all of us. Revitalize, revive us. Eternal God, we call. We call upon you today and we ask you for your mighty power. Our Lord, please give us an understanding of your vital life necessity in you. Open today our hearts to gratitude and witness about your power. Let us praise, let us testify you, O oh, our Lord, right now. Amen. Please manifest your power in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please see it. Have a seat. Uh, today, I am asking you to tell, to tell about God's power and manifestation in your, itself in your lives. Right now, I will, I will be walking around the church uh, today, and I invite you to tell. Thank you so much. I will tell about this uh, unbelievable power that you have witnessed in your life. Our story should be two, three minutes, maybe one minute. Just remember about time. Time is time for now, but thank you. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to share the story itself, my friends. Just say, you can say just that you are grateful and praise God for the presence in your life. Say out loud your testimony. And uh, you know, I ask you to say 
about missionary, maybe some testimonies that you will have. Or maybe you can say about uh, your financial problems and how that solve this problem and answer for your prayer about health. You, you can share this experience. And remember that we, uh, we all like uh, to say something at least another of our time. Who would like to start? I am ready to get, okay, Connie. Okay, I'll try to keep this really brief. Back in April, I had gotten a call from, or March, March I guess it was, I got a call from the conference office asking me if there was any chance that I would like to go to another school, and I said no, no, no. But I did tell them, if you happen to have a small school that needed something, maybe in a couple of years I might be interested. Well, two days later I get a call saying there's a school down in near Olympia that was meeting a teacher that really wanted an experienced teacher there. And I'm like, Michelle, I'm really not interested in doing that right now. And she's like, oh, you know, just come with me, take a look at it just really quickly. I will go out for lunch and we can just spend some time together because we haven't had time. And I was like, okay, you know, just to spend time with you. On the drive down, down she was telling me all the wonderful things about the school, and I'm thinking, yeah, but it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I get here, and I walk in, and I see this, I look at the school, and I'm thinking, oh, this is a beautiful campus. This is really nice. And I walk into the classroom, and I look in the classroom, and I'm seeing all these kids, and I'm thinking, yeah, this takes me back to Peoria and in my boardroom school, and I just really loved it, but, uh, you know, that's two, years, two or three years down the road, not, not quite yet. I walk outside, and we're walking around, and we go over to where my trailer is right now. And I'm standing there, and I'm looking at this. And now I'm reminded of, okay, I always forget, Elisha, Elijah, in the, with the wind, the tornado, the wind, the world, the wind, Elijah. Okay, so I'm standing over there, and there's this small, light breeze that passes through followed by a pine scent. And I'm like, okay, God, I am listening. And um, it's been, I've had my ups and my downs. It's been a struggle. It's been a privilege. And I, you know, I was able to um, email Brenda, text Brenda last night and say, I really love it here. And I do really love it. And I praise God that he put me here. Lord, praise the Lord. Who is next? Uh, I see Rob and uh, Carl next. Thank you. So back in BC, which stands for before COVID, <laughs> um, I had an experience with finances. The Lord showed me that if I put him first, the money will go beyond what you can believe. Um, uh, then we all know that nasty thing he had COVID. March 13th of 2020, my school district shut down. A 12 year uh, school bus driver school district shut down on March 13th. March 15th, I'm a musician at North Bay Wisdom Community Church. They shut down. I thought, I'm supporting my parents. How am I going to pay the bills? Both my jobs shut down. What am I going to do? And then the Lord reminded me of the experience that I've had with finances. So I just put every Thing in the Lord's hand with the Lord. I'm trusting you. Within just a couple of weeks, both employers notified me that I was going to go on salary, which would be I would get my, my salary, pre COVID salary, for both jobs. And I want to praise the Lord that I, although I didn't go to work for six months, every bill got paid. Every bill got paid for six months. So Malachi 3. Prove me now, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you can give a hand for God. Christ 
20 years ago that this last March, I was a drunk, and he praised his name, and he took that all away from me. Amen. And you, some of you have met my son, and I know it's brought her to bring my son back to God. And uh, he was coming. He gave up drinking, gave up smoking, quit working on the Sabbath, came to church a few times. But we know that when we start accepting God, he start, Satan starts working over time. And he certainly has worked over time on my son. He started to quit coming to church. He started to do things on the Sabbath, which we don't do. Let's put it that way. Christians don't do. Adventists don't do. But anyway, about two weeks ago, he went back home and uh, he met an old girlfriend that he knew in high school. Hadn't talked to her for a long time, but they hit it off, and all of a sudden, she's over here, she moved in, they got married. All in a two week time. She's not a believer, she smokes, she does a little drinking. All I can say is, I want you to pray for my son, and pray for me that somehow, God can change their lives, and He changed mine. And I really want to have you pray earnestly for my son. Thank you. When I heard Paul's story, I was amazed. Real power. <laughs> God's power is just like a person. I didn't think I would ever come back to Shelton Church. I was baptized here in 1990 when I got married. And I'm divorced now, but when I left Washington, it was 2003. My dad had pacemaker put in and I had a stroke and my whole left side my speech everything was some of you know that story so it was all off but within nine months I moved back to California with my dad I got back into radio I could talk again my dad died unfortunately but God brought me back to Shelton and I wondered why well here I am with my family the church family I started with and I'm writing for the local newspaper, a little kid's message, which wasn't my job. I was just supposed to sell advertisements. But when BC happened, as Rob puts it, they needed somebody when all the churches closed to be able to keep the people in the community reading about Jesus. And, you know, I honestly thought, as long as you let this happen, Lord, as many people as can see your word, I'll just pray every week that you give me the right words to say. And the emails I get from the older people Grandparents reading them to their grandchildren, old conventions as they call themselves, grumpy old men that had a tear falling out of their eye. I thank God because you guys, I am spiritually weak, but I know Jesus is alive, and I know He's working on the weaknesses in my life. And I just ask you, as my church family, to please lift me up in prayer that He can help me with my weaknesses and I can overcome them, so that I can be a stronger light because I feel blessed. Very blessed that he's given me anything to do at all when I'm just a sinner like everyone else. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, yeah, from this side. You know, I praise the Lord for a lot, a lot of things he's done for me all my life. And in the most recent years, I can honestly confess that I have had issues with background checks and getting hired at specific jobs because of the issue, okay? And so, praise God, I had one mistake after another, one failure after another, blam, blam, one failure after another, blam. And I'm on the floor, I'm like, Lord, help me please get through this. Help me, I need your power, I need your strength, I need your majesty, I need all of you to help pull me through. Hallelujah. And I can honestly confess that today, and list in all the information when you do a background check, right? You have to list up. 
And so I went from listing like four things to not listing anything at all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yep. I have uh, been married for about uh, eight years, and then I uh, went out of the church for 10 years, and I came back in, and um, I, um, I asked the Lord, I was working in prison, and I asked the Lord to please um, make a way for me to be able to keep the Sabbath. And uh, to make a very long story short, he answered my prayer, and I was able to keep the Sabbath. Then, um, probably about two years later, my husband said, you know, if he didn't give so much money to the church, we have a whole lot more money to spend on bills and stuff. And I said, sweetheart, looking back on my Adam's background, I said, sweetheart, if I didn't pay tithe, and if I didn't pay offerings, and the things that I do give to the church, we would not be in the position that we are now, which was pretty good. Six months later, my husband is not an Adventist. He's an LDS, a Mormon. Six months later, my husband started paying tithe. And ever since then, he has paid a faithful tithe. Newbies. 
but he did because it's my property and now in the end and and he did stop and just shut it down where he was and um and uh took it unhooked his stuff and rode his tractor home now when he came home when he came back on sunday morning guess what the hay was perfect <laughs> He just he shrugged his shoulders and he shook his head and the last I saw of it after it was all hail uh, was him driving his tractor back down the road and he's still shaking his head. <laughs> he says, I don't understand it, I don't understand it, but you know, and so it gave me the opportunity to write to him, write him a letter about this is what it is about the Sabbath and this is why we keep it and this is why it's important. I don't know where that's gonna go, but that's the Holy Spirit's job. Praise the Lord. Maybe a couple more and we will move for for next Sabbath. A couple of Sabbaths together. Yeah. Four years ago, a man and his son came here to church and I heard the son say, Where are all the miracles that God pre prepared for the people going across the Red Sea and all the, way, all, all the ones the Bible talks about. And I thought to myself, where in the world is this for them? Because my life has been Amen. a continuous bit of miracles. Amen. Uh, and I'll, I'll just tell you about one of them. I could talk to you all day about this, but uh, I had talked with a girl on the telephone from Illinois, and we I had talked maybe three or four times. I knew enough about her that, that I felt a friendship with her. And one day, the phone rang. And she says, I want to talk to you about religion. And I said, well, what, what makes you think I know anything about religion? Oh, she says, I've been listening. Her husband was going to a uh, religious uh, schooling. And she thought he was going to the wrong place. And so she wanted to ask me questions. And I said, well, get your Bible by your side. And we'll see what we can do. And she, we talked for about two hours. She asking me questions. And I gave her scripture to find that told her what the answer to her questions. I could not do that today. I probably couldn't have done it then, except for I had some help. God has given me a gift for absentee members. How many in here have a relative, child, son or daughter, or somebody who is not going to church anymore. Huh? Quite a few of you. I was one of those. And I'm thankful that somebody kept praying for me, my parents, members of the church would come looking at them, looking me up, and I just listened to them and show them the door. But the Lord didn't let me go. About eight, nine months ago, I was driving around with my quarterlies, I think about 50 quarterlies, the lost souls, and I was impressed with it. I saw my Holly Garland Dalton's house. I hadn't been there, I hadn't seen her in quite a number of years, and so I said, I'm going to go see her. And praise God, she's coming to church with us. So, praise God. So, praise the Lord.
that I don't have to be on the pity pot anymore. And God answered my prayers. Now he showed up. Manifestations of God's love and God's power in our life. Uh, in our life. Amen? Amen. Uh, I have something to say, but I think I will stop right now and I will share just my short experience and I believe after that we will pray. When I came to Shelton, it was six months ago, my I started to think about evangelistic Syria here because here because I understand that that this is a good opportunity to raise your voice in that community. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and uh, I started to pray. We talk with board members, with team uh, elders team, but I understand this is a lot of money. We need to prepare our field. We need to prepare our church. Uh, yeah, we need to do a lot of stuff for. for for, for that goal. And I a uh, couple, uh, maybe one month ago, I started to pray every Tuesday, just one hour praying about our evangelistic activities here, about our mission, about our, um, any, any activities what we can have. And you know, just maybe in two weeks, it was two weeks ago, I got call from one, Man, I didn't know him before, and I, <laughs> I never met with him, with him before, but he called me and said, Who are you? What, what is your plan for Shelton? And you know, I was amazed. Why, why he asked me about that, you know? And after some, some talking, we spent maybe 40, 40 minutes talking, and he told me, you know, my dream, I would like to give some money, or give some money for any evangelistic Syria in, in Shelton, just in Shelton. Uh, I, I, I just started to talk with him, it's hard, you know, it's hard to find somebody uh, who will come here and the money, it's a lot of money, you know. And for our church sometimes, I, I believe for now it's hard. And he told me, what, 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 what is the uh, amount of uh, money you need? And I told him, maybe around twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars And he told me, I am ready to pay it. Amen. <laughs> I was amazed and he told me, I am ready to pay right now if you're ready to do right now. <laughs> you know? And I was amazed because it was answer for my prayer. I prayed and understand that with our, with our strength and our power, we cannot. But God can help us people. I, I didn't didn't seek somebody for that goal, but I found and I got this answer and we we have this conversation with, with him and I believe we will continue to have this conversation and I believe we will have a logistic Syria here. We need to start to pray and I am again I would like to remind you we need to start to pray and we will see some miracles in, in our life. Amen? Amen? I would like to pray with you. Our Heavenly Father, you are amazing God. Your almighty God, yes. praise the Lord for your love and for your mercy, for your power, for, manifest, for the manifestation of your love in our life. Yes. Today we pray and ask you, forgive us and give us your strength, your power, your heart, your thoughts. Give us this win, spiritual win in our life. Give us this beautiful, amazing opportunity to share message about you for our world. We pray, be with us, be with our church, with people around us. Bless us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.